Welcome. In a previous video, I did an unboxing of this RTL SDR receiver, and I'll put a link in the description of this where you can get it on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. I'll also put a link to my SDR playlist. So in this video, I'm going to be connecting it up to a Mac, and I'll be using the Cubic SDR software to view the radio waves. So before I get started, I want to share Cunningham's Law, and that says the best way to get the right answer on the internet is not to ask a question, it's to post the wrong answer. So I'm not an expert on SDR, I'm just sharing my experiences here. So if I say anything wrong, please politely correct me in the comments, and then if you're watching this video, maybe read through the comments and see if people corrected me, um, because it's kind of a back and forth sometimes, and I'm trying to research and share some good information. I'm mostly sharing my experience, but I know I may pronounce words wrong, I may say the wrong thing, and I'm trying to learn here too, and people are, that are watching this are probably trying to learn and they're following along with me. So that being said, I've been playing around with this Cubic SDR software, and it runs on Mac, PC, Linux, I think it runs on a lot of different systems. So I don't have it on this computer I'm running now, I run it on my other Mac, so hopefully we'll get a good example of what the install goes like. And I'll put links in the description of these websites I go to too. So I'll click on Cubic SDR Downloads, I'll click on the GitHub page. I'll scroll down here. And for the Mac, I want the DMG version. The EXEs would be for Windows. App image is probably a Linux thing and has source code too. So I'll click on that and download it. I'll double click on it to open it. And now I'll drag it to my applications folder. Okay, so now I'm going to plug in my RTL SDR dongle into the USB port, and I have the antenna hooked up, and I have it kind of sideways with one part pointing up and the other part pointing down, and if you pop the center cap off of the antenna that came with the kit I got, you'll see that one uh, part is connected to the center and one is connected to the outside. The part that's connected to the center I have pointing up. So this is something people can correct me on though. I'm not an expert on antennas, I'm still learning all this stuff, so there may be a better way to do it. Okay, so I've dragged that to my Applications folder. Now I'll open that up. I'll just type Command Space Cubic SDR. I'll hit Enter. It says it's an app I downloaded from the internet. Do I want to open it? I'll say Open. I'll close that. Okay, so now we have this screen that comes up. It says SDR Devices. So if you look at Local here, I want to click on Generic RTL 2832U. I'll hit that, and then I'll hit Start. Okay. I should mention too that I record this at 720p, so uh, if you have a 1080p monitor, though you'll have more room than I have on the screen here. I just do that so it's bigger when people watch it on their devices. I don't know if I can get audio on this easily. Let me see. Okay, I had to do some tweaking here. I have a microphone plugged into the headphone jack and it was blocking the audio, so I added a Bluetooth speaker so we can get a little sound out of this. I can't play very much though for copyright reasons. So to listen to an FM station, you wanna click FM here in the upper right, and then click down here on the waterfall. This is called the waterfall. If you click in there, you'll get FM. So it's playing right now. I'll turn my speaker up. Uh, dude, you may want to slow down. There's a cop car up there. Okay, it's just a PSA thing, it sounds like. So in the upper left here, you can do FM, FM stereo. This is narrowband FM. This is AM. I don't know off the top of my head what LSB, USB, DSB, and IQ are. This isn't an in-depth video, I'm just trying to show you the basics of getting in. So this next screen over here is a close-up view of what we have down here. So you can adjust this here. On the right, this is a representation of the audio, I think. Below that we have the frequency. So this is the frequency you're listening to, the one that says frequency. Bandwidth is how wide it is, and center frequency is the center frequency of the waterfall. And then you can adjust these levels here on these green bars. You can adjust them up or down. Here's M for mute, S for solo mode toggle, P for peak hold toggle. Then we have the adjustments here for spectrum averaging. And down here we have waterfall speed. So the nice thing is these have little tool tips on them. So if you hover over something, you can see what they're for. So there's a rock station in my area. It's 1033. So I can go over to these and I can click on the upper part of the number to change it. So I can change it to 103, 1033, and then I can change these all to zeros. That's kind of a hassle though. If you click on this and then hit the space bar, it will bring up a box where you can type 103.3MHZ and I'll hit enter. 
and it will set me right on 103.3. So I'll turn the radio on for a sec. Okay, then you have bandwidth over here, and that's how wide it is. So if I go down here, I can drag this wider. So here we have 500 kilohertz, but the regular station should be 200 for an FM station. So, and actually, instead of doing that, I can just go in here, hit spacebar, I'll type 200 KHZ. There we go. So you'll notice over here, this is a very strong signal, and I'm actually in a basement, so I don't have the best radio reception in here, but I am getting some stations picked up. So if I click on this one, I'll turn that on. Remodelers, you put yourself out there. Okay, have a little commercial going on. If you see to the right and left of this, these are HD radios. So those are digital signals that if you have an HD radio, you can listen to. And this Cubic SDR doesn't um, tune into those as far as I know. You can't decode them. I think there is some software on a PC that can do that. I haven't played with that yet. So you can drag this here and you can see the center uh, frequency is changing. Okay. And then you can tune down below on the waterfall. So if we wanted to see what this green was here, we could, well, here's one. We can click on that, and I'll turn that on. The peaceful protest that he organized. It was a news program. And you can adjust these, all these sections, you know, up and down. I mean, there's a lot of adjustments on here. So let's go back to 103.3. Okay, so if I wanted to keep that, I can go down here to bookmark on the left. And I'll say new group. And I'll say FM radio stations. I'll hit OK. And here we have 1033 FM. So another one is 1075. So I'll click in this box. I'll hit space 107.5 megahertz. Enter. Okay, we're in that. I'll go down here on the left. I'll choose FM radio stations and now we have 1033 and 1075 in there and you can give them labels too it looks like I haven't I just know them by the frequency so that's how you tune in with FM radio I tried doing AM radio but I you have to have a different antenna to set up to do that I'm not completely sure how that works and like I said I'm just getting started so another thing we can do with this is tune into the weather radio so I'll go back to Safari here I opened up a tab here and this website, I'll put a link in the description of this, this is www.weatherusa.net slash radio. And this tells you the frequency of weather radio in your area. So if I scroll down here, I'm in Iowa. So my frequency is 162.550. So I'll copy that. I'll go back over to Cubic SDR. I'll click on frequency and hit space. I'll paste that in. I'll put MHZ and I'll hit enter. So now I'll turn this up, and you can kind of hear this. It's not very good. Well, this uses narrow band FM, so I want to go over here to the left and choose NB FM. So if I hit that. Hour. Sunday night, partly cloudy until midnight. Mostly cloudy. Now we're hearing the weather radio. So I'll switch that back over to FM. Okay, so the last thing I want to look at today is I have a little remote control that operates a light. So you plug this little box into an outlet and you plug a light into it. And this remote has on and off on it. So I'm going to go to frequency here. I'll hit space and I'll type 433 megahertz. I'll hit enter. And now I'm going to press the button on the remote and you'll see the uh, waterfall change. So I'm pressing it. I let go. Here's off. Here's on. So you can see it where it's it's on whatever frequency this is right here. Looks like 433.99. So I don't know how to interpret this. I just it was a neat thing. You can do this with garage door openers too. I think run on that same frequency. So if you have a garage door opener, you can hit it and you can see that it's working. So if you have a garage door opener and you're not sure if it's putting a signal out at all, you could go to this frequency, hit the button, and um, you know watch the frequency here and your garage door may or may not go open too, but uh, I thought that was kind of interesting. So that's the basics of running Cubic SDR on a Mac. Um, you know, I can't go too in depth because I don't know that much about it, but um, there's a lot of neat things on here. I haven't had any problem running it. It seems to be incredibly stable. So it's kind of fun if you just want to dip your toes in. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And if you can answer other people's questions, go ahead and leave an answer. I appreciate that. 
If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.